hello what's up youtube in this tutorial we're going to be looking at basically how to always retain skin texture so if at all you have issues every single time you use frequency separation and your images turn out to look a little bit blurry and the skin really doesn't look nice at all because you have used the wrong values for gaussian blur on the images in photoshop this is the right tutorial for you and the image you're going to be using was taken by LG pixels and i'm going to link the instagram link in the description of this video so you guys can check out their awesome work so this is what we're going to be using for demonstration and learning in this very tutorial so after you have noticed this image the very first thing that you have to notice is frequency separation is going to divide the image into the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer in the high frequency layer we have our textures and in the low frequency layer we have our colors so remember every single time you want to retain details you also have to incorporate the colors within your image so let me first of all demonstrate that for you so i'm just going to come and create two layers from a background layer by pressing ctrl or command j twice then we're going to name this into color and we're going to name this into texture so basically we have created the two layers that contain our frequency separation so that after we combine the two layers we are going to end up with the same image so usually if at all you have a frequency separation action it stops at this point whereby you have to determine the amount of textures you want to remain with in your final and retouched image so usually what is happening when you play the action in the background it means that it is going to stop at this point when for example you come to filter then you come to blend you come to gush and blah your action stops at the point when you have to apply your gush and blah so this is the most important emphasis for this tutorial so usually the radius may be all the way down so like i said if at all you are always struggling with textures in the images and retaining them you have this option that says gush and blah and make sure the preview window is turned on so you can use this option to zoom in and zoom out and you look for an area that has more or prominent skin textures than the rest of the image so just look at the photo that you have and you look for that area that has more or prominent details than the rest of the skin so the reason for looking for this area is because we always want the sample area meaning if at all this area for example has more skin textures than the rest of the image when we are taking up the radius for the gaussian blur and we start losing out on these prominent or more visible textures in the image it means that the rest of the textures in the image will have already gotten lost and they are not going to be visible at the end of the process so using this as a reference point we are going to start taking up the radius so like i said your images may be having different levels of details or different amount of skin textures so you always shouldn't cram this radius i know of people that always cram the radius for the gaussian and they apply it to every single image which is wrong so depending on the image that you're working on you have to always take into consideration the details and you don't have to apply the same amount of radius of the gaussian blur to every single image remember images may be taken using cameras with different or varying megapixels and people usually have varying skin textures and the amount of lighting also differs from one image to another so that is going to determine the amount of textures that are going to be captured within the image so like I said, you come and you select this after getting a sample of the skin textures that are more visible in the image. So come to the radius and left click and start dragging up the radius as you're looking at this Gaussian blur preview window and also looking at the image in this case. So you have to be careful with this step because if at all you mess it up, you may not be able to achieve the base out of the skin textures in the image so around at around eight that is when i'm just starting close out on the details 
So at round 8, that is when I'm just starting to lose out on the details. So you can see, by clicking on the preview, you can see we have to stop at the point when you're just starting to lose out on the details within the skin. Yeah, let me repeat that. You take up the radius slider as you're looking at the image in the preview option and also looking at the image on this other side. So when the textures that are prominent are just starting to get lost from the image, just stop at that point. Meaning the textures we lose out on this point are going to be the textures that we're going to be remaining with in our final and retouched image. So just come and simply hit OK. So this doesn't matter if at all you use the lasso tool or you use the mixer brush tool as a tool for retouching your images. So after doing this, you can see that the image tends to look a little, a little bit blurry. So just come to the textures and turn it on. So this point we come to image and come down to apply image. So after this, you can set I'm using an 8-bit image. In this case, you can say I have 8 right here, meaning the image is an 8-bit image. So when it comes to this step, always come and select the color layer and make sure the channel is RGB. And the blend mode for an 8-bit image is going to be subtract. And the opacity at 100%, preserve transparency and mask cannot check. The scale is 2 and offset 128. And make sure the invert option is not turned on and you'll see the textures on this gray kind of layer. Then if at all you're working with a 16-bit image, so if at all you have 16 right here, meaning your image is going to be a 16-bit image, just come and simply select the color layer. The channel is still RGB. The blend mode this time around has to be add. Opacity at 100%. Preserve transparency and mask cannot check. The scale is 2. And offset is 0. And make sure that you turn on the invert option and you can see that the textures are on the gray kind of layer. But I have an 8-bit image. So I'm just going to be using a blend mode of subtract. Invert is not turned on. The scale is to offset 128 and I'm just going to click on OK. So right now, the image is going to have this gray kind of layer. So I want a blend mode that is going to take out the grayness from the overall image. And that is going to be linearized. So ch change it from normal and change it down to linear light so right now we are done separating the frequencies of the image and we're going to put these two in a group by pressing ctrl or command g on the keyboard and you can see there is no difference between the original image and our background image so you can see it is more of a same thing so i'm just going to open this up and i want to prove to you that we have retained the original skin textures in the image so like i said this doesn't matter if at all you use either the lasso tool or the mixer brush tool every single time you're retouching your images so i'm just going to select the low frequency layer and to prove to you for the mixer brush tool i prefer to turn off the texture layer and i'm going to come under the brushes right click and get the mixer brush tool and for the settings i'm just going to go through all these quickly hardness at zero clean brush is selected the option which says clean the brush after each and every stroke is also selected the weight of nine load of 75 mix at night and the flow of 100 percent Make sure sample alias is not checked. So make sure this option is not checked. And with the mixer brush tool selected and the texture layer turned off, I'm just going to brush through these textures or the colors rather. I'm just going to mix and blend the colors within this image using our mixer brush tool. And you can see that the way I'm moving my strokes, I'm following the way the shape of the forehead is basically a shaped or the way light is falling on the forehead. You can see in order to retain the forehead shape, I'm moving the strokes of the mixer brush tool in that kind of direction. You can see that what I'm doing, that is what I'm doing. So if I told you want to learn how to use the mixer brush tool, I already have a tutorial about an in-depth kind of analysis of using and applying the mixer brush tool while retouching images in Photoshop. So if at all you're interested, that video is also already on this channel and it was uploaded. It is the previous tutorial before uh, this one. So when you turn, when you come and turn on the texture layer of this very image, you can see that the original textures 
have been still retained in this very image. You can see the before and after. You can see that the textures are still retained within the image and we have a nicely retouched image. Then if I told you use a lasso tool to retouch, I'm just going to come and select the lasso tool. The feathering is 22 pixels because I want the selection edges. I'm just going to press Q. You can see I want the select selected edges or the selection on the skin to have smooth edges. That is why my feathering is at 22 pixels. And I'm just going to press Q again to hide the mask. So you come and you make a selection onto the skin area. Then come to filter and come to blur and come down to gush and blur with the low frequency layer selected. So this point is when you have to take up the radius. Up to a point when you're having a nice skin texture for your image. So at around 24 that is when I'm having a more natural and realistic skin texture for this very image. You can as well use this technique that I found out by myself. So the radius that we had when we are separating the frequencies of the image, when we apply the Gaussian blur in the first place, just multiply that radius by 3 and type in that value. So 8 times 3 is 24 and I'm just going to type in 24. So depending on the radius that you may have used for your image, just type in that value after multiplying it by 3. And just come and hit OK. You can see still we have the same or we have kept the original skin textures within the image and we have not changed or even altered the original skin pattern in the textures so basically this is how to know how to retain skin details or skin textures in your images and if i told you i found this video helpful don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe this channel if i told you i've been watching and you're not subscribed yet to this channel Ronis from Ronis photography Thank you for watching. I'll see you in yet more amazing trails. And don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.